This is a question I've received in a few of my other Paint.net tutorial videos, uh, specifically the ones about making animations, so I'm finally going to address this for any interested parties, and also for anyone who is just interested in a free picture editor for Windows. First you will need Paint.net. If you don't have it, I will link my tutorial on how to download Paint.net in the description. Next. After you have installed Paint.net, or if you already have it installed, right click, click open, or simply double click on the icon and open the program. After that, import the image that you want to edit. It can be any image you want. Preferably, you'll want a .png image for quality purposes, but a JPEG works fine as well. It can be something you searched on Google, or a photo you took with your phone or digital camera. Click on the File tab, then click Open, or you can just use Ctrl O for quick access. When your image transfers onto the canvas, hover your mouse over to your toolbox here in the upper left hand corner. The tool you want to choose is the one that resembles a magic wand, right above the paint bucket. Here's where it can get a little tricky. If the background you want to remove is a solid color, like solid white or black, orange, green, whatever and it contrasts with the image you want to isolate, all you'll most likely have to do is just click anywhere on the background, like this, then press the delete button on your keyboard. Voila. So in many cases that's all you'll need to do with a solid color background, but sometimes you may need to adjust the tolerance. So the tolerance button can be found above the left hand corner of your canvas, right here, it's a little slider. By default it's set to 50%, so you may need to just ad adjust this a little bit, up or down. When you see this kind of thing, the little too much is being selected by your magic wand, turn down the tolerance by clicking on it. So the closer you get to the left, the lower it goes, and the further you click on it to the right, the higher it goes. If you find that the wand isn't selecting enough, or you want to select more, increase the tolerance. But if you increase it to 100%, it's going to select everything, and uh, obviously we don't want that. Also, you may need to select multiple regions of your image with the wand to delete all areas around the part of the image that... just that part of the image you want to retain. Voiding out a solid color background is pretty straightforward, unless the image you're trying to isolate is the same color as the background, or the image contains many mixed elements, such as with a photograph like this. With a lot of colorful real-world commotion in the background, as you can see. When that's the case, you may need to trace around your target with the paintbrush tool or line curve. In these cases, I prefer to use the line curve uh, drawing tool because it makes much cleaner lines than I could ever draw, at least me, you know, I could ever draw with my mouse. You may find that you're going to get uneven lines. You're going to get this kind of squiggliness. So, this is what I use. Uh, come over here to the, your toolbox, select Line Curve, click on the button just above the Shapes button here, and above it and to the right. As you hover over it, a pop-up text should display its name like this. Okay, back to the canvas. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to outline just that element of your pick that you want to preserve. So click uh, where you want to start your outline, hold the left click button, hold it in, and drag your mouse along the outline of what you're isolating. If it's a straight line, you can just take it all the way up or down the length of the object. If not, make a small line like this. Then uh, once you Release the left click button. You'll be able to manipulate the line using these four square points, like so. This can get a bit tedious uh, if the element you're trying to trace around has a lot of contours. So just try to bear with it. I apologize in advance because I know I've done many images like this and it, it can be tricky and time consuming sometimes when you want to make it perfect. So if you need to zoom, the zoom slider is down here in the lower uh, right hand corner, right there. And the way you can get it 
as exact as possible, you know, is if you zoom in. And uh, sometimes, you may not always need to do that, but if you do, this is the way you do it. And remember, we're only outlining uh, the part of the image you want to isolate. So when you're drawing your line, try not to draw the line directly on the image. Draw it as close to it as you can possibly get so that it's, it's, you get a very sharp, razor sharp, clean cut. Because we're going to remove this line later on. Also, please note, when you trace your line using the line curve tool, or if you decide to use a uh, paintbrush, make sure that whatever color you use strongly contrasts from the background and the isolated bit here. Because, so you might want to use, if let's say your background is white, and what you're trying to isolate is, uh, I don't know, green and orange. So you might want to use a black line. But if, if the, what you're trying to isolate is black, then you may want to use green, you know. So then that way, we won't delete part of that image when we take out that line later on. Because when we delete that line, we don't want to take any part of our picture with it. So once you have what you want completely traced out, come over here, click the full screen button right down here, left of the zoom slider, and go to the tools window to select the magic wand. Click anywhere that is not the part that you want to save. And turn up the tolerance until every part of the background is highlighted. Except that part of the image that you're trying to isolate out and save. Now press the delete button on your keyboard. There you go. And then uh, zoom back in so that you can see your trace line large and clearly. And then uh, click on it with the wand, like this. And if more than the line gets selected, remember, turn down your tolerance again. I always forget this, so it happens a lot. If you notice this is happening, just go back up here to tolerance, turn it down until only the highlighted uh, the only highlighted bit is the outline that you drew around your isolated image here like this and then just as before just press the delete button and that line will also disappear and what you should have after that is a nice transparent background image like this and you'll know it's transparent when you see this you know like uh, white and gray checkerboard pattern here back here so when you see this kind of thing that's how you know Whenever you, if you overlay it on top of something else, that's going to be transparent. Okay, now, now, please pay attention. This is the last and final step. And if you don't want to mess up your nice new transparent background, it is very important that you save it correctly. So no matter what type, uh, no matter what file type you began with, you must, you must save it as a .png image if you want to maintain the transparency of the background. If you save it as a JPEG, it's going to automatically fill in the transparent regions with a solid color. I don't know how it determines which color to use, but it's usually white or black. And you'll have to go back in. If you do that, you'll have to reopen it, uh, reopen that image again in paint, use your magic wand again, take out that little bit, and then resave it as a .png file. So save a step. Don't do that. Make sure that you save it when you are saving the completed image that you have edited. .png. Save. Save as. What file type? .png. There you go. Congratulations. Now you can layer as many transparent images. You can do this as many times as you want in paint.net anyway. And you can overlay all these images like this on top of You can make as many as you want. I'm just going to do two here. I'm just going to put this little thing over here on top of this face so you can see uh, Mr. Troll President and there you have it that's all I got for you folks so I hope that someone somewhere finds this tutorial uh, useful in some way and as always thanks for watching